Welcome to this ELC self-study video. Today we'll be looking at how to write conclusions and recommendations for a report. Now comes the part where we demonstrate our insight. We need to show our lecturer that we understand the information we have gathered. The conclusions and recommendations sections are where we show our own interpretation of the material. The conclusions section shows our summary and interpretation of the information. The recommendations section shows what needs to be done as a result. The first part we'll look at is the conclusion section. This is where we'll outline everything that the data has told us. What does the data tell us about our topic? For example, our previous example showed that people who know the consequences of recycling are more likely to do it. Therefore, our conclusion could be that education could provide a useful tool in increasing the likelihood that people will recycle. This will also help to focus our conclusions on the issues raised in the first parts of the report. We can use the conclusion to address each issue and bring the whole report together. Remember, we don't put any new information in the conclusion. We're just summarizing and interpreting the information we already have. We need to show how the information we presented affects the aims from our introduction. During this part, we can use a wide variety of language styles. This is one of the parts where we really put our own mark on our work. We still need to keep to an academic style, but we can give it our own voice. Next, we come to the recommendation section. This does exactly what it says. This is where we tell the reader what we recommend. Not only what does the data tell us, but what doesn't it tell us? For example, since all measures were based on self-reporting, and respondents could choose whether to provide their responses, social desirability bias might exist in the results, particularly when recycling is commonly promoted and encouraged as a socially desired behavior to protect the environment. This would show the reader that we understand the information that has been given to us. Also, that we know our work is not perfect and can help to inspire future researchers to find out more. There's always more to learn. It's also a good idea to get together with some classmates and check each other's work. Since we are the ones who wrote the assignment, we may not notice our own mistakes. It will be much easier for our classmates to spot them, so it's always a good idea to get someone else to check your work before you submit it. Proofreading someone else's work is a really great way to learn. Explaining things to someone else is also one of the best ways to remember something later on. So it's also one of the best ways to study for exams. And that's it.